All right, guys, I am really excited about this episode because we're going to do a number of things that are always very exciting to me. First off, we're going to talk about the structure of arch tops, like kind of taking it apart. Like, why did this guitar do this to end up to me and what can we do to fix it? We're going to use some very practical things that some people take for granted or even discount totally to be part of a fix of something. And we're going to build a couple of tools that you can use getting stuff that you have that you will put in your, I hate to use the word arsenal, but I don't know, collection, whatever. In other words, it's up there on the shelf. You know what it'll work for. It's there. When you see it, you're going to be able to say, okay, when I see a guitar with tone bars, I'm going to need to do this, this, and this, because if I ignore where these particular cracks are and the patterns that I'm seeing over and over again, I'm going to need to use these. It's the reason I build templates. It's the reason I have collections of things, because I make tools that I can go to. Other than that, I will tell you this, stay away from tone bars, which are bare basically parallel braces that are curved that go along the direction of the body and neck. Okay. Meet pumpkin. Now, you've seen a pumpkin before. You saw the Instagram post of this. You know, it's taking me longer and longer to turn around. That's good because that'll give you more time to talk behind my back. You've seen Pumpkin. You've seen this one before. This goes back into the old days. It has a North Mississippi All-Stars poster on it signed by Cody and Luther Dickinson. It has some whimsical folk, folk, F-O-L-K art cut out of a can and painted very elementary by me. And it has some matchbooks of cats and your mother-in-law. See her right there? Yeah. Every mother-in-law I ever had was a Sagittarius. That's right. Um, it's got, you see those frat markers that are orange? Yeah. So anyway, this is the pumpkin you all know and covet. But this one here is going to be... Punkin, P-U-N-K-I-N. I'm going to do a hashtag. That one's probably not taken. Punkin, the junk pile arch top. So what do we have here? We have a 1962. Remember I did an episode about how to tag your stuff and keep inventory to understand value. I'll try to give you a link up there. But we're going to walk through this guitar in a couple of episodes. It is a Harmony H1214 built in 1962 I was two years old I would have bought this guitar then and kept better condition had I had the ability to be economically self-sufficient back then um, without getting into too much detail here I got this it come up for a really good price it looked better than it was in the ad I don't think guitars are capable of like like this dating site stuff where you show your, your uh, night of graduation picture when you're 62 years old and single. <laughs> Did you hear that? <laughs> Anybody knows me personally, um, too bad for you, but they all know what <laughs> means. Anyway, this guitar was stripped of its finish. Guys, let me tell you something about wood finishes. They are there for a reason, because if the wood isn't finished, it will continue on the state it was meant to. It starts off, it adds rings, it gets bigger, it turns into a tree. The tree uh, does all kinds of physiological, plant physiological things that I could go on and on about, but I won't. Uh, it builds ring after ring and cylinder after cylinder each year. Some of the tissue becomes storage tissue. Uh, for water and starch, those cells are called parenchyma, etc. But when a tree ceases to function, when its roots are cut off and it lays there, it starts to decline. And part of that 
declination. Did I just invent a word? There should be a dictionary. You know what? I like invented dictionaries. In fact, don't worry, I used deodorant today. There should be a, 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 a KP dictionary of words I've made up, kind of like the word of barrel house words. You know what, I can't resist it. I always say that this is going to be shorter. Um, let's pick up. A barrel house word, I just opened it up. We're in the D. Down on. What do you think that means? Down on. Okay, I'm talking to the clean people out there. Down on. Against, disdainful of. An American colloquialism. Colloquialism of mid-century origin. Kind of like the example is. I'm tired of being mistreated, and the way you do won't you tell everybody that I'm down on you. So anyway, I'll make up my own dictionary. Of, I don't even know what I was talking about. Anyway, rewind it, and then call me and tell me, and then I won't record this, and you'll realize I've just wasted so much time. Anyway, when you take the finish off one of these guitars, it begins to lose moisture, and then it does things like crack. Part of the reason I'm calling this one pumpkin, look at that, that looks kind of like a pumpkin. It's, it, and the back is off all the way up to here, and it's pulling itself in at the waist. It looks like somebody had a shot at a neck reset. So this one is gonna be really, really easy for me to work on, and we're gonna learn some things now. I'll probably draw this out on a piece of paper, but when you go to look at a guitar and you see some warping or, or in other words, something is sticking up right here and here that follows the line perpendicular parallel to the neck and you can see that the whole top of the guitar is wavy, but there's high spots right here. That means it has tone bars and you can find those tone bars by taking your little finger, sticking it through the F hole, and you're hitting something right away. And that is because somebody has taken a piece of wood that goes from the tail or the head piece inside the guitar all the way down to the tail block and made it like an airfoil. We've talked about that. And the guitar has become dependent on that. They didn't do much other bracing than on the back. They put some strips across here. And you see me use chick flick teal dyed muslin. I'm going to give you a, a sample of that on the Galliano junk pile. It was completely tore up. But you're going to find out that these tone bar guitars tend to dry out because their bracing wasn't that great. And the worst part about it is, especially with the bigger K's and harmonies, especially K's, the ones that have the tone bars are the biggest body guitars, and that leaves more for it to fall apart. So we're going to end up... There's a big crack right there. There's a crack right here. And if you look inside of there, you're going to see that there's some thin, like veneer bracing going across the back right here that is actually detached in one spot. And it's actually favoring this. That's an English word, F-O-V, F-A-V-O-U-R. I favor, uh, it's favoring this to bow up right there and send this big crack. So we are going to start off by rehydrating this. And I'm going to show you how to do something that is going to be pretty simple. It's going to send you off looking in the trash can for that old guitar case that you threw away and dismissed easily as easily as you all dismiss my feelings as a human being some of your dreadful comments. Look, when I tell when I tell people to be socially appropriate, you really need to think that one out, son, anyway. Just having fun with you. But you're going to be looking for that guitar case that you threw away because we're going to take a guitar case and turn it into something really important. Then once this is all fixed back up, we're going to take the neck off. We're going to do a bunch of stuff that you think is really hard to do 
Now you've seen me do this stuff before, but I'm gonna walk you through again step by step on something that you can probably pick up at a yard sale for 50 bucks. And we're gonna turn this into one of the things of fall, the fall season, you like pumpkins. You never thought you were going to covet a pumpkin before. Well, guess what, son? I am going to take you there. And now let's get to the bench. If you would close your ears, I wouldn't talk. Let's get to work. Okay, guys, let's have a look at this guitar before we do anything with it. We'll kind of do uh, what's right, what's wrong. Aut autopsy using the autopsy overhead camera. Again, this is a Harmony H. 1214 which we found the stamp down in the body along with some other discrepancies and it was made in 1962 now steel reinforced neck means that somebody put a piece of metal of some type or another here um, there is no truss rod as you look at um, there's no escutcheons meaning the little liners that protect um, the tuning pegs coming up out of the tuning bodies and as this is tight you can see that this will lean forward i don't know if you can see right there but there's some space at the back and the tuner peg is actually leaning against the body right here that's not good in terms of either a stress on the neck and you can see there might be a little crack developing right there or a scratch anytime that you have things running in parallel holes that are pressured up and the pressure isn't relieved properly you develop splits um, I have a theory that sometimes this curvature here was a way to offset the tuning pegs from each other a little bit so you didn't have something in line that would run with the grain and cause cracking the nut looks okay in terms of how it should be if the rest of the fingerboard was okay you have the typical I don't know how to trim my nails. We know that sometimes people let their thumbnail grow out to the point where it breaks off and they're incapacitated to learn about thumb picks, but you can see what the pattern of wear was on somebody fretting the guitar. So this guitar was fretted quite a bit. Now, let's move this down. I have all my scrap apparatus here and I'm too lazy to turn off the camera and I'm going to burn up precious energy that the sun will have to give us back through somebody's battery solar system scrap apparatus here and there. But um, the action on this is really high as it is right now. The arch of the body is also very high, but this bridge is missing anything that looked like it had thumb wheels or anything. So somebody has been playing with this one for a while. Let me pop this loose here and see if we can turn this over. You can see that someone has been playing with the neck right here. This is not a crack, but somebody glued something up here in an attempt to pick the bot the neck up a little bit. So we're going to have to steam the neck off of this thing, which shouldn't prove too difficult. But I want you to notice on the side right there, there is what appears to be a crack developing right just below where the side meets the top of the body. You have a crack here, and you have one at the top of the F hole. You also have what appears to be a crack or blemish right there along the body that was either repaired at one time or it was done right in the factory. Who knows? And then before we get into the bottom too much, the body is starting to offset itself quite a bit. There is the neck joint right there. You can see there's a gap. This thing is strung up. But you can see that there is a bit of... of something right there that says the neck has been moved up. So what somebody did was broke the neck loose, put this piece of wood underneath the neck and tried to gain some neck height to move the bridge up to make the action okay. Poor man's or hippie neck reset. Watch for this. While they were taking all that apart, they put the 
finish off the guitar, sanded it down. And that was a mistake because once you take the finish off of wood, it goes into its natural, natural process, which is drying out. And that drying out has, you can see that uh, there's a tiny offset over here that you can't see. Let me whip this around, love this workstation. But you can see that something is going to happen right there. This is up high. But most significant on the top is this crack right here, which is not uh, difficult to deal with, or this one. These are following the grain. You can see the grain pattern here once all of the finish is off. Now, this is a tone bar guitar. Most, more and more tone bar guitars are coming my way. Let me grab a yardstick down here and show you what I mean. If I lay this here, there's an angle, a slight angle that widens as we go down because the fretboard, the bottom of the fretboard is much wider than the top of the fretboard. When we do matchbooks, hey, I've ever showed you matchbooking a six string guitar. If you do that, if you're into covering up the frets for making it hard for everybody to play. But again, if you put this on both sides and draw a line, you will see um, that inside the guitar, if you reach in, this is the most valuable tool you can have besides the light. You reach in and you will find a brace that runs parallel to the body and the grain of the guitar running here. Now, what tends to happen with these that are set up with these tone bars, that's the only bracing up here. You will remember the Galliano that we ended up putting a scrapparatus underneath when it collapsed, when the whole thing collapsed and we weighted it up and then some of the telltale signs are splits in this area here and on either side especially on the bass string that is where the heavy strings are that is where the tension is but anyway what will happen is things will start to shrink and cut loose and those tone bars start to cut loose and you can tell if the arch on the top gets a little bit wavy look for that hold it up, bounce it off the light. If you see that, there's probably some tone bar problems. And to fix those, you have to take the back of the guitar off. When you do that, you can pitch the neck angle worse. So the first thing we want to do is take the neck off of the guitar. You don't ever steam the neck off of a guitar when the bottom is off of it. You want to do that because there's so much going on. Let me cut this loose right in this area where the neck meets the tail block. If this is off just a little bit, the angle of the neck, you want a slight back angle uh, down towards the headstock and up towards the body. But again, we would not take the back off and then try to pressure this off with steam and stuff. And we're going to do that with this guitar and I'll catch up with you on that one. It's time. But we want to make sure that the neck is off before we pull the back. Now, more about these tone bars. If you take a piece of coat hanger and bend the end over just like that, you see that right there? Can you see it? Is there not enough contrast? Let's bring some chick flick teal in. Do you see now? Can you see me now? Yeah, there's a hook on the end of that. If I stick this in here and I put some tape on there, you see that? If I stick this in and put that hook at the end of the tone bar I can go to the edge of the F hole and you see that there's a mark there right there now if I slip this in and go to the other side of the tone bar and pull it and hook it and do the same thing right here I can find out that tone bar is that thick I would guess that to be about 12 or 14 millimeters. Now, what, is, what does that mean? Well, if I have to put a pickup on here, something I want to drill or, or cut this out, I don't want these tone bars to be cut into or collapsed without doing some additional reinforcement. I did a big single cutaway arch top for Troy Murray called uh, the Restaurant Junk Pile. We put Gibson 57s in episode right up there, but you can basically take this and say, okay, this we know runs perpendicular or parallel 
to the neck angle, which means that inner mark would be right there at the edge of the neck here, and the width of the tone bar. So your tone bar is all the way out into here, and you can mark that off if you're going to do any work up in here. But that pretty much summarizes the top. Let's flip this over because this is where things get bad. Okay, we've got a crack developing right there that has been fixed with yellow glue in the past. Um, let's move this up a little bit so we can get the whole body in here. We've got another crack right here that's going to run all the way up here. We can feel it right there. There is a big crack waiting to happen right here. I can feel it on the surface right here. And this bows up. The body actually bows up. We need a little bit more visible up here. The body actually bows up pretty severely about that much right here and then the rest of it's looking okay but things are starting to pitch this way turn this way whenever things start pitching and turning one way or another sometimes the tail block and the head block are at risk so i have a question for you let's say that i want to just kind of move things around here pull things in with clamps and start clamping this down and trying to get this back to where it is. Well, the first thing that's going to happen is this whole thing is going to break right here. And I'm going to use another angle to show you why. Okay, guys, we are looking at the bottom of the guitar where the trapeze tailpiece, not really a trapeze tailpiece, but a cheaper version and the, the uh, strap button, which, by the way, I don't like these. They turn a little bit and then slip right out your guitar crashes the floor but the tail block runs from here to here and the kerfing is inside right there I don't know if you can see any of that maybe we can tilt this down just a tad so you can see that but look how badly this is bowed and it's bowed to the point where you can see bits of kerfing right here that tore off with it missing from here um, and the body the back is separating from the body and it dug in right here oddly enough where that yellow glue repair was made that's where the cracking over here and shifting stopped can you see this here pose over a little bit here but then when that couldn't go anywhere it started to break loose right here the most significant thing you're going to see here is that this back of the body is up off of the sides and the rest of the body by about 26 millimeters at the worst so why is that well if we look in there you can see that there is a brace that brace has cut loose in the middle so the distance in that brace cutting loose is kind of comparable to this but the brace has stuck in there and hung in there at the edges so when the brace doesn't cut loose all the way across the top and things are drying out the center unbrace is going to dry out much more quickly and therefore this is what is responsible for this big bow right here now let me ask you a theoretical question Let's say I wet this up and steam this up. And let's say I just smear some glue in there on that, on that part of the brace that you can see. I hope you can see that it's sticking up in there. Yeah, you can see the, the gap between the bottom of this part, the top, the underside of that, and that brace. So if I just smear some glue in there and start applying pressure here, and even if I steam it, What's going to happen is it's going to blow out up here. I have a theoretical question for you now. Let's say we know that the rest of the body appears to be in okay shape. Let's get this camera down a little bit where we can see it. It appears to be in okay shape. You've got some stuff sticking out over here from the top. 
that's not a good sign, meaning the body is twisting. If this is open up here, there's some missing, it's kind of a diagonal effect, teeter-totter thing I was telling you about. But if I start clamping here, and I'm steaming all of this up up here, would you agree that any correction that takes place here might be at the expense of something here or here making an accommodation for it? So this all comes together in, in, in one piece. And if this needs this much correction, that's got to come from somewhere else if this up here is not expected to crack. So let's agree that this piece needs to be addressed individually of this or there will be a detrimental effect overall. So I'm going to show you how to make a little tool that does not go out on that motorcycle that's revving out in front of my property. But we are going to show you a little device we can make that will allow us to fix this and hydrate this and bring this back into proper shape without jeopardizing this. Okay, you notice I have my restaurant hat on because I'm fixing to share a recipe with you all. And here's the ingredients. Number one, you need a Sharpie or magic marker, depending on Baby Boomer through Gen, whatever XYZ they're on right now. But a Sharpie, a magic marker. You are going to need the guitar you're working on or one with very similar body shape and widths across the upper and lower bow, bow, bows. Yes, grasshopper. You are going to need a piece of this whiteboard chalkboard. If you go to a craft store because you're trying to get brownie points, they're going to sell you a small piece of this for an elevated price. If you go to your home improvement store, they are going to sell you a piece that's three times as big. Ooh, yeah, buff. This doesn't just happen. And you are going to be able to get three times the product so you'll be able to build a template for three different guitars. So let me see. You're going to need... The guitar, you're going to need the magic marker, you're going to need the chalkboard, uh, whiteboard, and yeah, you're going to need some Jesus when you die, son. Now, I'm going to take this outside. You want to take this outside? Yeah, I'll meet you out there. But what we're going to do out there is we're going to lay this on the whiteboard side of our project board we're going to trace out the guitar so we have a template of the bottom and we're going to cut it out and i will kind of show you those steps out there so you don't have to listen to me any more than you have to and believe me you'll have to to understand what kind of brilliance is fixed to come out of right here All right, here we go. Ta-da! Look at this. Just like I said, 
I still have enough product left for two more. They could be single cutaways, they could be a Florentine, they could be a Venetian cutaway, they could be a double cutaway, they could be anything you want. But you'll get about three out of, even with California's high tax rates, etc., less than $15 plus your gas, which is going to take you about $40 in California to go 10 miles and back. So, I think you're smart enough to know that we can take something that's cupped and if it's this shape we can put that cupped thing like the back of an arch top guitar what am I doing here like the back of an arch top guitar instead of clamping it to the body of an arch top guitar you pull that back off you set it up here and if it raises up after I drill a hole in here I can inject steam up through here clamp this down and bring it back into shape without depending on the deformation, not deformation like y'all talking crap about me, but deformation of the body and sides of said arch top. Now, if you're one of these people that just runs out and whatever and does whatever I said, well, there's a cliff over there and there's a bridge over there. But in case you went ahead and made this and you don't know what to do with it, depending on your level of craftiness. This side is a blackboard. You could take some colored chalk and write, my gig is here tonight, or you could flip it around and say, my gig is here in uh, uh, dry erase pens. Don't use this. Or you could write, I'm at lunch. I'm at my gig on this side. That way, when people see I'm at lunch, they don't, then they can go in to the place that you're playing at. I don't know how that happened, but they can go inside and get their sandwich without their hearing being destroyed or their mental capacity being diminished. If your music is that black, blah, rented lips, bad, glad I could help. This is project number one. I talked more about it than the time it took to make it, but you will need one of these and you will need it numerous times if you're goofy enough to keep buying the kind of crap I buy. Let's move on to project number two. Okay, this is a simple one. You will need a drill of some type. That could be a piece of rock chipped away to a point. It could be I don't know what it could be. I'll leave that up to you. That's the least complicated part, but you need to be able to drill holes that aren't too big, but not too small. Then I need you to go to the grocery store. Yeah, you know what that is? If you don't, it's about time you went. That food that you eat every day does not just come out of that thing you call the refrigerator. I need you to get some Ocello Scotch-Brite Ocello sponges. I don't need any other kind of a sponge, just get that kind. Because if you don't get this kind, I can't guarantee you the results that you're seeking will be attained. I can't guarantee you any result will be attained from anything I tell you, but get Ocello, you get it? Next thing, do you know what bath soap is? Well, you should find out from what I hear on the street. Anyway, you go into that section where you're going to travel and they got these things. You put a bar of soap in them. If you've ever been able to make the combination of a bar of soap and one of these and the third and most important part of that combination, actually taking out and using it, you are my hero. Anyway, let's start here. You are going to want an old guitar case that nobody wants except you. If you're working with four inch thick guitars, you're going to want something more than a four inches thick. Now, I have this guitar case. It is tore up from the floor. Everything is falling apart. You all know what I think about flat top guitars? No. Think about how low you must go in the, in the uh, I don't know, food chain of guitars to get this label. Junk flat top guitar. Yeah, that means nobody wants this. It's got to be big enough to fit your guitar and there's got to be plenty of room. I'm going to open this. I should have Geraldo Rivera here to open it, but you see that? Ooh, ah, that's some Elvis velvet if I've ever seen it. But this area right here needs to be very deep. Very deep. As deep as you can get it. If you find the Titanic in here, 
that's probably deep enough. Okay, where was I? Oh yeah, back to the soap dish. Are you doing the math yet? Are you psychic? Let's go. Okay, here we are. We take said drill and drill bit and we drill through the top. Notice that this is domed. Like an arch top guitar, you may be able to make an arch top guitar out of it if you can find the right size pickup and neck. Anyway, this area is domed. This one has some quaint little geometric patterns. So I'm going to go along and drill this big of a hole in the center of several of these like this. See that? Now, you do not want to drill through the bottom, but you drill through the geometric pattern. Isn't that noise annoying? It sure is. Now, I have all of these. I can take a piece of sandpaper, which of course I have right here, and I just go over the top like this, like so. And because I also have it on the edges, I can come in on the inside and go like this. Do you see? It's just that yeah. sharp. I'm going to take my Ocella. For those of you that listened, you've already heard what I think about you not buying Ocella. There's a reason you buy Ocella. That is because when you open this up and you squeeze this edge just a little bit, like so, and like so, what do you know? The Ocella fits right in there. Then you take some water out of your Palmiro junk pile guitar, whatever kind of scrapparatus you got, and you put that on there. Now, you want this to be saturated, but not dripping wet. And you can tell by that by turning this upside down. And if no water runs through the holes, then that was there. You know it was there. You saw it was there. Rewind. But if no water runs through the holes, then it's just perfect. And because there's no water running out of the holes, it is perfect. Does that surprise you coming from me? You have several of these. You do an assembly line. If you have more than one guitar, they're probably popular at home if you have as many as I do. Yeah, things are on the rocks. Anyway, make a few of these. Now, there's light at the end of this tunnel because we're going to open the casket, not close it. And you'll see that our little gadget that's still not dripping any water, regardless of how vigorous I am with it. We put that in the deep part, the deep part right there, see? Because this is deep enough to take this dried out guitar that you have... And you're going to put it in there after you loosen up these $22 strings that somebody put on a $5 guitar. I can't figure that out anyway. You want those to loosen up and you put your guitar in there. And look at that. There's plenty of room. Then you close this up. You set it in a place that's not in the sun. And this guitar is going to try and rehydrate. So you do nothing for the next couple of days except pray, son, pray hard.